We begin class like any other class. Um, we go over a couple things as far as what we're going to be talking about. It may, it may have made it worse if I flattened her. And um, we have demonstrations. And then moments later, you hear the gunshots. And uh, they were incredibly loud. Um, boom, 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 boom. And uh, I froze for a moment. And the students jumped out of their seats. Um, of course, they were startled and um, scared, and they tried to scurry out of their desks, and they started to run in the opposite direction of the classroom door. Um, and in running in that direction, they were running towards the windows on the other side of the classroom, and I yelled at them. I said, no, no, not that way, not that way. Go to the other side, go to the other side. Get behind the desk, get behind the furniture, go the other way. So they went from one direction of running towards the windows, which I guess they did out of instinct. You run away from where there's danger. You run away from where you're, you, know, you hear something scary. So they ran that way towards the windows, and I yelled at them to run the opposite direction. So they you know, hurried themselves off to the other side and jumped over the desks and uh, my desk and around the podium and tried to get as close as they can behind my desk and whatever furniture I had by that opposite wall of the windows, which is the wall that is on the same, which is the wall where the um, classroom door, the side of the classroom door. And in away doing that, the, they away. would be out of the line of vision. Okay, away from the door. Away, okay. they'd be on the side of the door, but away from where they would be seen. We had a glass panel. In the door. Yes, there was a glass panel or glass window in the door. So if they were to be on the opposite side of the room, they'd be in clear vision. So I had them all run to the opposite side and hide okay. as best as they could on the, uh, that wall. And then what happened? The gunshots continued and they got louder and louder. We were trying to keep each other quiet. Uh, the kids were on top of each other and hugging each other and holding each other. And we were trying to hush each other shh, and calm, you know, there was some whimpering and try to calm them down and keep each other quiet and calm as best as we could. And the shots got louder and louder. And uh, then you hear the piercing sounds. You hear the piercing sounds of the fire alarm going off and you feel you feel the vibrations in your chest as the gunshots were getting closer and louder. You could feel the vibrations in your chest and in your body. And uh, dust and debris fell from the ceilings, from the vibrations of the gunshots. It was like extremely loud, like in a tunnel because of the hallway. And then they got to the point where they were loud because the, the bullets had just shot through the glass of the door. And then what did you do? We just kept hushing each other and holding each other and keeping each other quiet and calm. And did you hear, uh, did the sound seem to dissipate or what happened to the gunshots? After a little bit of time, the gunshots started to get a little more faint. They seemed to be in the distance. And did, do you know where they were coming from or do you have any idea where they were coming from? I didn't know exactly where they were coming from, but I knew it was in the hallway. I didn't okay. know exactly where, but it was in the hallway. Okay. So they started, the, the, the gunshot sounded more distant, more faint. And um, when I noticed that it seemed a little further away, that's when I got up and I kind of peeked over my desk, around my desk to see, you know, what had happened and kind of assess the situation because at that point I started to hear um, you know, the whimpering and the moans and groans from the kids that were shot. And were kids shot in your room? Yes. Who was shot in your room? Uh, ben Wakander, Samantha Mayer, Madeline Wilford, and Carmen Shintra. Okay. And uh, so what, what, what else did you do? Did you, did you, when you got up from your desk, Ms. Reogan, did you do anything? When I first got up, when the gunshots were a little further away, I... Um, I took my keys and uh, I went over to the door and I felt it was a safe time. So I 
carefully uh, opened the door just a little bit with my left hand and took the key in my right hand and kind of worked my little arm around to just unlock the door and closed the door, went back to where the kids were all huddled and hiding, dropped the keys down and looked again to see the kids. And it was confirmed to me that the moans and the groans and the crying were from the kids that were shot. And um, at that point, I had um, I knew that I had to try to do something to help the kids that were injured. So okay, and did you? I did. Who did you help? Um, well, initially, Ben Wakander was crying and begging for water. Please, please, I need water. Please, I need water. Uh, so I had my water bottle on my desk, and I gave him the rest of my water to drink from. The water bottle, he, he drank whatever was in there. And then um, I had another student that was beside me, Logan Mitchell, who was um, pretty much next to me the, the entire time. Um, and he was beside me and helping me, kind of guiding me through, giving me that extra, yeah, it's okay to do, yeah, it's safe, da, 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 I don't hear anything. He was kind of listening and also checking. And uh, I had a baby blanket that um, I used to cover uh, my coffee maker. I had a mini Keurig in the corner. So whenever I wasn't using the Keurig, I had a baby blanket that I covered it with when it wasn't in use. So I had a student that was hiding next to the Keurig throw the baby blanket over to me, and I used that baby blanket to make a tourniquet for Ben's arm okay. because he was bleeding out. So I just made a makeshift tourniquet and I put it on his arm, made it on his arm. And then um, Logan was um, looking over Maddie, Madeline. Madeline and, Wilford. And I believe he got a denim jacket from another student and covered Maddie with a denim jacket. Um, I saw Samantha, Sam Mayer, um, that she looked pretty stable, uh, looked like she was shot in the knee. So when I saw it, it looked like she was shot in the knee, I, said, I figured she's pretty stable, she's all right. I noticed. Carmen beside Ben. I, I noticed Carmen beside Ben, of, and um, I went close to just kind of bet, get a better gauge, and um, she wasn't moving, and she was just laying there. Okay. Just mm -hmm. laying there still, and there was no response. She just wasn't, she was just moving. Uh, she wasn't, excuse me. She wasn't moving, and um, she was just laying there still, no response, face down, her head to the side, and hair just covered her face, and I knew that she was probably gone. And then um, I went over to Maddie, and uh, I took a look at her, and it was hard to tell where exactly she was shot. I knew she had multiple gunshots, but I couldn't tell exactly where, but I, I, I wasn't clear as to where, so because I wasn't clear as to where the, sh the shots hit her, um, and I knew there were multiple ones. I was afraid to really move her because of the position that she was in. She was propped. Um, she, was, she was kind of propped up between the outside of my desk and the podium. The podium was somewhat close to my desk and the outside of my desk. She was kind of propped up in that position, so right? Did you do the 4F, do you recognize that? That is. Is, that, is this photograph truly and actually depicted? That is correct, that's exactly it. Is that the way she was positioned? That's what we said. That's Madeline Wilford. And that's the position you were just describing. Correct. And I couldn't tell where she was shot, so I left her like that because I was afraid if I moved her, it may, it may have made it worse if I flattened her. Okay. So that was it. Get vaccinated and get paid. Up to $1,700. We are currently offering the COVID vaccine, flu vaccine, UTI vaccine, RSV vaccine. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy yeah. And many more. And many more on Channel 4. Call the number or visit the website below for a full list and availability of our vaccines in your area. And sign up and earn up to $1,700. No insurance, social security number, or proof of U.S. citizenship is required, but space is limited. Call or visit the website now. I didn't know exactly where they were coming from, but I knew it was in the hallway. I didn't know exactly where, but it was in the hallway. We have demonstrations, and uh, so they, you know, hurried themselves off to the other side and uh, they tried to scurry out of their desks, hurried themselves off. They tried to hurry themselves off and, and so they, you know, scurry out and uh, hurried themselves off to scurry out of their world. And um, there was some whimpering and, uh, and in doing that, they would be out. And Frankenstein on channel 9 and and I don't know anymore 
worked my little arm around to just unlock the door. Um, boom, 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 boom. You could feel the vibrations in your chest and in your body. So I had them all run to the opposite side and hide. Okay. Uh, the kids were on top of each other and hugging each other and holding each other and kept hushing each other and holding each other and keeping each other quiet and calm. We were um, just ducks sitting, kind of like sitting ducks. Um, we had no way to protect our ducks, no way to stand up for ourselves. Survivors and family members of victims are called to testify. I saw his body not spasming, but more like trying to take his like final breaths. Um, and then at that moment, you know, it started getting more real. You know, just trying not to think this is real, thinking it's, you know, fake. Um, you know, and then... They seem to be in the distance. Do, do, you, do, do you 